Hi everyone. In today's class, we will be discussing regarding male reproductive system. In male reproductive system, there are presence of a pair of testes, a pair of epididymis, a pair of vas deferens, a single ejaculatory duct, a pair of seminal vesicles, single prostate gland, a pair of Cowper's gland, urethra and the male copulatory organ that is called as penis. So, let's get into details of the male reproductive system. So, in male reproductive system, the primary sex organ is the testis. So, these testis which are being present have two main function. The primary function being formation of the sperm and second function is the secretion of the hormones. So, these testes are being protected by a dark pigmented skin called as scrotum or it is called scrotal sac. So first we will discuss regarding the scrotum and later we will discuss regarding the testis. So scrotal sac generally is made up of three layers external, middle and inner. External is made up of the skin, middle layer is made up of the connective tissue and innermost layer is made up of smooth muscles namely cremaster muscle and dartus muscles. In the external morphology of the scrotum, we can see that the right and the left testes are being distinguished by a thick scar present and that thick scar is called raphe. Internally when we look after the scrotum, scrotum consists of the muscle layer where as I said there are these muscles which are present are smooth muscles. They are cremaster muscle and dartus muscle. So this cremaster muscle and dartus muscle makes the scrotum or the scrotal sac to act as thermoregulator which means the testis which is the organ where the spermatogenesis occurs so that is being regulated by the scrotum. Scrotum acts as a thermoregulator by maintaining the temperature necessary for the spermatogenesis. So how the scrotum helps in or acts as a thermoregulator? That is because of the muscles. So whenever in the environment if the temperature is low or less, so at that time these cremaster and dartus muscles will contract thereby making the testis to move towards the abdomen and whenever in the environment the temperature is more at that time the cremaster and dartus muscle relax thereby making the testis to move away from the abdomen. So that is how the uh, muscles, cremaster muscle and dartus muscle help in facilitating, facilitating the temperature required for the testis for its spermatogenesis. So thereafter the scrotum generally consists of temperature that is 2 to 2.5 degree lesser than that of the normal body temperature when compared to the testis. So this temp lesser temperature facilitates the spermatogenesis. In the next part after the scrotum the next is the testis. Testis are pink, ovoid, soft smooth organs and these testes are 5 cm in length, 2 cm in width and 3 cm in thickness. So regarding the testes, during the 7th week of the embryonic development, the testis formation gets initiated under the influence of a factor called as testis determining factor with the help of the SOX9 gene. So this testis determining factor is being located on the Y chromosome. So the sex determination plays a very vital role in differentiation of the sex. So sex determination when it occurs the Y chromosome which is being present so that consists of this testis determining factor which initiates the formation of the testis. And in the later stages of the development that is during the seventh month of the gestation period the testes which are being formed in the abdomen, in the fetal abdomen, so they descend into the scrotal sac passing through that of the inguinal 
क्या नाम बाय चांस इफ द स्क्रोटम बाय चांस इफ द टेस्टिस फेल टू डिसेंड इनटू द स्क्रोटल सैक द कंडीशन इज कॉल्ड एज क्रिप्टोर्किडिज्म दैट इज फेलियर ऑफ द टेस्टिस टू डिसेंड इनटू द स्क्रोटल सैक एंड दिस क्रिप्टोर्किडिज्म रिजल्ट्स इनटू अजूस्पर्मिया व्हिच मींस द टेस्टिस रिमेन इन द एब्डोमेन and fail to descend into the scrotal sac resulting into azoospermia so how this azoospermia can be recorrected azoospermia can be recorrected by an operation a minor operation that is called as orchiopexy so this orchiopexy is where the inguinal canal is being incised and thereafter the testes which are being present in the abdomen they are made they are made to descend into the scrotal sac so in the next part when we look after the testes the the longitudinal section of the testes so longitudinal section of the testes reveals the presence of uh, the layer that is called as tunica so there are three layers in the testes the outermost being the vaginalis which is generally hollow and it is being filled with that of the coelomic fluid next is the middle one tunica albuginea which is made up of a bluish white uh, connective tissue tunica albuginea and the innermost is made up of a loose connective tissue which is highly vascularized that is tunica vasculosa so among the three the main important is tunica albuginea where this middle layer tunica albuginea innervates or invaginates and once it invaginates it results in the formation of many number of the testicular compartments they are called as testicular lobules so there are around 200 to 250 testicular lobules are being present and each and every testicular lobule are being separated by a small gap so this is called as septum each testicular lobule consists of 1 to 3 seminiferous tubules seminiferous tubules are the structural and functional units of the testis seminiferous tubules are the site for the spermatogenesis to occur so if you look after each seminiferous tubule each seminiferous tubule are around 70 to 80 cm in length that is why they are being highly coiled so in case of the seminiferous tubule if you look after in each testicular lobule you can see that the seminiferous tubules are being joined together and they form a straight tube so this is straight tube which is being formed called as tubuli recti and all the tubuli recti of the seminiferous tubule open into a common opening that is called as rete testis rete testis is the group of interconnected tubules and these tubules are lined by cuboidal epithelium along with a single cilia are being present in each and every cuboidal cell and that helps in the propelling of the newly formed sperms into the vasa efferentia vasa efferentia are the tubules which arise from the rete testis which also consisting of the stereocilia which helps in propelling of the sperms from rete testis into the epididymis so here very important point is the tubuli recti rete testis and vasa efferentia all the three together form intratesticular system whereas epididymis and vas deferens forms extratesticular system so after vasa efferentia which is also called as ductuli efferentia the next part is the epididymis epididymis is the part which is being attached to that of the testis so this epididymis is being divided into three regions first one is called as the head or caput epididymis second one is called as body or corpus epididymis third one is called as tail or corda epididymis among the three regions the main region is the head or caput epididymis so what is the significance of the caput epididymis 
Catheter bed edemis consists of mainly four different types of cell. The first one is called as principal cell, thereafter is apical cell, basal cell and a clear cell. Among the four different types of cell, the principal cell constitutes the main part of the epididymis. So what does these cells secrete? These cells secrete various of the chemicals. So these chemicals help in various of the functions in the sperms. So to discuss about much about the functions of the secretion of the epididymis, first you should know that the sperms which are being produced from the seminiferous tubule, they are generally uh, immature, they are said to be non-motile and they lack fertilizing capacity. But once the sperm enters and gets, uh, when they get nourished with that of the epididymal secretions, so there the three changes takes place. The first one is they attain the motility, they uh, get the fertilizing capacity and they undergo physiological maturation. So these three changes occurs in the head of the epididymis. So once these changes occurs by the peristaltic movement of the epididymis, the sperms will travel from the head to that of body, from the body to that of the tail, where in the cauda epididymis or the tail, the sperms are being temporarily stored. So this is the longitudinal section of the testis. Now, in case of the transfer section of the testis, transfer section of the testis reveals presence of the seminiferous tubule. Now, if you look after a single seminiferous tubule, what are the cells present in and around the seminiferous tubule? So, that we will discuss. So, in case of the surrounding in and around the seminiferous tubule, what we can find is there are presence of four different types of cells. The first one is called as germinal cell, second one is called as the Sertoli cell, third one is called Leydig cell and the last competent cell. So here if we see in the structure of the seminiferous tubule, the seminiferous tubule are being lined by germinal epithelial cells which are cuboidal in shape. So these germinal epithelial cells undergo mitosis only when a male individual attains puberty. So once the germinal epithelial cells starts dividing mitotically, they give rise to the cells called as spermatogonia or sperm mother cells. So these sperm mother cells gives rise to the primary spermatocytes by the mitosis. Thereafter, primary, primary spermatocyte undergoes first meiosis and gives rise to secondary spermatocyte. Secondary spermatocyte gives rise to uh, spermatid and spermatid are generally non-functional cells which undergo transformation to become spermatozoa. And the other cell which is present inside the seminiferous tubule is the pyramidal cells which are called as uh, Sertoli cells. Sertoli cells have many number of functions so that we will discuss in the next uh, uh, video and apart from that of the Sertoli cell uh, outside to that of the seminiferous tubule you are able to see the cluster of cells so these cluster of cells are called as Leydig cells where Leydig cells are responsible for secretion of the testosterone testosterone that is the main androgen and apart from that the competent cells competent cells are those cells which acts as the macrophages which prevent the entry of the pathogen or which are defensive in mechanism. Thank you.